music. I think melodious playing was uh, more to his nature actually than blues. <laughs> didn't think in terms of blues. He could play the blues. Mm -hmm. You know, but he really, Roy, Roy, even when he was down and out, his was, his suffering was not like a blues musician. He didn't suffer from those things. He suffered from a longing, a kind of a separation that I can only say is from either a distant heaven or, or you know, just Roy never felt comfortable walking on this planet. And it, uh, I mean, he would even talk about it, you know, that he came from another place. And that separation or that pang that he experienced in, in some of his more haunting melodic stuff it was, was really more akin to his, his deep uh, side. Roy was like always right over the edge. And when I think of going over the edge, it's like over the edge of physical reality into another realm. And that's where Roy constantly was inside. He'd been studying all those things and he'd, he was aware of those outside influences we can't see and don't understand. I think that Roy was a very, very shy person. I think that Roy was a very, very insecure person. I think that Roy, uh, in some ways, never believed that he was as good as people kept telling him he was. Now, there was another side of Roy which uh, was exactly the opposite of that. I mean, he would tell people that he played on Suzy Q. Uh, he told people that the Rolling Stones wanted him to come join the Rolling Stones, which I printed turned out not to be the case. Um, and I mean, and the, and the idea of Roy and the Rolling Stones, you know, wearing, you know, one of these ridiculous shirts and the double knit pants that he used to wear is, 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 is a sort of an amusing idea. He was a weird character. He was violent. He was real quiet, real depressed at times. And he had he had it all. I don't know. I don't know that I ever saw him laugh and chuckle. Maybe, maybe over at Danny's house or something, sitting around drinking beer, trying to learn how to play banjo, he would laugh at himself because he couldn't do it, and chuckle. But most of the time, there was no smile on Roy's face. I mean, I, the times that I saw him. I mean, I'm sure there's. There had to be some good times in his life somewhere along the line. <laughs> God, I hope there was anyway. I'm sure at home with his kids and stuff, he was a different guy. Roy could get upset, but he was one of the nicest people. He was so generous. He'd give you the shirt off his back. He just had an effect on people, and I'm not talking about his, his guitar playing ability. I'm talking about the, the fact that he was a, a gentleman, and he was a gentle man. He, he, uh, you know, he had his moments otherwise, but he was a gentle guy who, um, who uh, treated everybody the same. Roy was the kind of fellow you wanted, you wanted to be his friend. You wanted him to share confidences with you. Uh, it, it was apparent, three things were apparent to me at the time. That he was a very shy fellow, he, that he was very intense. And that he wasn't emotionally stable. There was something haunting about him. The next moment, braggadocio. The next moment, deceptive. The next moment, manipulative. But at base, it seemed very vulnerable. And almost not able to really control himself. And the more I got to know him, the more my instincts about that proved true. He was a gad about, he was, he was a drunk, he was a dope addict, but he was a rascal. He was always conscientious, he was always caring, he was always uh, dedicated to our relationship. And, and I saw him that way with other people uh, as well. But inside he was possessed of demons, he, there was no doubt that something had happened in his upbringing or in his early life. Uh, that reminds me of Robert Johnson's refrain, they're hellhounds on my trail. Man, he went extreme. Uh, 
from very happy to very sad. He wanted everybody else, people around him, to be happy. But there was a sadness about him. Uh, growing up too quick. Being on your own at 13, 14 years old. Traveling around the countryside, motel rooms, people you don't know. You know, they had weirdos and freaks back in those days, too. In my mind, when I think about Roy, actually, I think sadness. I think about a lot of the sadness that he endured and a lot of the happiness that he brought other people. So he was, he was unselfish, but he, uh, he paid a price. He was a very tormented uh, person. And um, uh, I'm not trying to make him sound like a martyr or anything, but uh, um, in a lot of ways, un unselfish, you know, sad. Uh, um, unrewarded comes to mind uh, and again I'm not saying he may not have been his own worst enemy in a lot of ways uh, that that for sure was true Roy was just basically a down home sort of guy a guy of I would say average intelligence and way above average perception and his guitar playing he spoke through that